All right, hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. I'm here with uh, Quentin, and today we're going to do a three phase inverter board diagnostics and how to check an inverter board for BRV. Um, Quentin, great to be back with you. Uh, I've taken a few weeks off, and uh, it's going to be great to be back, man. Yeah. Um, so we, we've done a similar video on this before. Quentin uh, wasn't all that satisfied with it, um, wanted to come back to it and, uh, and dig back into inverter board. We, uh, we really appreciate all the comments we get on, especially the VRV stuff. You all seem, there's a lot of engagement there. So uh, we wanted to dig back into um, inverted board di diagnostics because it's, it's, it's the heart of all, all VRV. Tell me what we got going on here. Yeah, so the first thing to understand is, basically if you can check one type of VRV, uh, three phase inverter board, then you can pretty much check any of them. Yeah. The points and the places where you put your meter might be different but the procedure is the same. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do anytime that you suspect an inverter board issue, let's say that we have uh, an error code that indicates inverter compressor overcurrent. I mean, you've tried to uh, run the compressor and, and you see that it is indeed pulling overcurrent. And before you go and condemn that compressor, you need to confirm the integrity of the inverter board. And there's a couple of ways that we can do that. Um, the first way is going to be through the bench test procedure, okay. okay? And the bench test doesn't literally have to be on a bench. You can leave the board inside of the unit if that's easier for you. So we're just isolating it. We're just testing this one component. Yeah. So it's not a live system. You know, we're powering the system down. And anytime that you uh, get ready to stick your hands anywhere inside of an electrical uh, cabinet, we always want to make sure that all of our capacitors are discharged, yeah. you know? So use your meter set it to volts DC, make sure that those capacitors are discharged, okay? On this particular inverter board, we've got two test points uh, labeled P and N. Okay. And that stands for positive and negative, okay? On a VRV4 um, uh, system, they actually provide us with a couple of pigtails right there whenever you take that, that top panel off. Mm -hmm. There'll be some white pigtails. A lot of people are always like, well, what does this plug into? Well, it doesn't plug into anything. That's there for your safety. So you can actually take your meter and check it at that pigtail before you ever even let the panel down on the front. Okay. Yeah, so if this was a, a live system, you know, it had been running mm -hmm. and, you know, we just put it into forced recovery mode to shut the system down, do like what we call a soft start, I mean a soft stop rather, and you power down the system, these capacitors are going to are going to have some charge yeah. on them, you know, and so that will, that'll light you up. They're supposed to. That. They're supposed to. Yeah. If they don't have a charge, there's a problem, right? right? So we could just take our meter and check the P and the N terminals okay. and just make sure that there's not any voltage there. Okay, so anything below about 30 volts DC, um, you're okay to start, you know, unplugging things and stuff yeah. like that. But for our bench test, we want to make sure that everything is completely gotcha. discharged and that's before the P, we take it out of the unit. That's the P3 and the N3. Yep, in the scenario P, yeah. yep, yep. And P and N, um, positive and negative. Yeah, you make, know? makes sense. Makes sense. So the first thing that you'll want to do is inspect the board. Look for any burn marks or anything like that, anything mm -hmm. obvious. You know, if you see a burn mark in the middle of the board, the board is, is right. it's failed, okay? If it smells bad. If it smells bad, Jeff Smith likes to use the sniff test. Mm -hmm. you know, it says right. use the nose that God gave you, you know? Yeah. Do a sniff test. So if you smell burning, there's probably a burning. Um, so following that. Letting the smoke out. Letting the smoke out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, figuratively and literally. Yeah. After that, once you do your, your visual and your, and your nostril check, mm -hmm. then you want to go through and just make sure that all the fuses are, are intact. Okay, and that's a simple process. Different boards might have fuses in different places. Go ahead and check all of them. It's a quick and easy procedure. Okay, so we'll just turn our meter to our audible beep test. We're going to confirm that our meter's functioning properly. And then we're just going to go through and check all of our fuses. So that fuse is intact. We've got another fuse here that's intact. We've got another fuse that's intact. Okay. Those do not appear to be replaceable fuses. That's a very good point. They're not replaceable fuses yeah. unless you're really crafty with the soldering iron, mm -hmm. which if the fuse blew, they're probably blue for a reason. Right. Right. So if you got a blown fuse right off the bat, it's it's, it's done. It's yeah, go get a cup of coffee right. and you know, talk to your customer yeah. and go ahead and get on get on your uh, your parts ordering team. I mean, it's always a good practice too to to have your, your parts folks check and see if that unit's under warranty. Mm -hmm. You know, this this component, it may still be under warranty. Uh, they have a really nice warranty, so make sure that you're not charging your customer. Right. So following that, we're going to want to conduct our first check. 
All right, so we're going to check the input side of the inverter board. And so the whole premise of the inverter board is to take AC voltage, convert it to DC mm -hmm. voltage, and then simulate an AC voltage out of that to, to run our compressor. Yep. Okay, so our compressor is an AC voltage compressor. So in order to do that, we've got a diode section on the front end of the inverter board. But you'll also notice that there's a couple of relays here. These are isolation relays. That's going to isolate us from, that's going to isolate our, our input side to the actual uh, DC bus. So whenever we, whenever we do our inverter checks, we need to make sure that we're checking it at these terminals here that they provide for us. All right, so we've got a plus and we've got a minus. And then in between, you're going to have a few different test points. You're going to have three total, and they've got like a little squiggly line. Okay? And so the first check that we want to do is we want to go ahead and set our meter to diode test. Okay, so that's this little, this little triangle thing with a line through it. And a diode is simply just, uh, it's a gate. You know, it's a, it's a check valve for electricity mm -hmm. is the simplest way to explain it. So make sure that your meter has the diode test function. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and set our meter to that diode test. And first we're going to take our positive lead on our meter. Okay, we're going to make sure that first it's plugged into the, into the, into the red side of our meter mm -hmm. and then the black lead's plugged into the black side. Okay, so we're going to take our positive lead and we're going to go to the plus terminal where they're going to take our negative lead, our black lead, and we're going to go to that first little squiggly line. We should read OL, then we're going to move on to our next one. We should read OL, then our final one. We should also read OL. Okay, so the simplest way that I know to explain this or, and you know, can remember it is if your positive meter lead is on a positive terminal on the board, then the, the result should always yield OL, OL, OL. Okay, so watch what happens next. We're going to take our negative lead and we're going to put it on the positive terminal. So now we have swapped our leads around and we're going to take our red lead and we're going to put it on the squiggly line. We should have 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 volts DC. We're going to go to the next one. Same thing, next one, same thing. So, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to take our negative lead and put it on the negative terminal. We're gonna take our positive lead and put it on our first squiggly line. OL, OL, and OL. So the same thing holds true for this test. If your negative lead is on a negative point on the board, the result should yield OL, OL, OL. Now we're gonna swap our leads again. We're going to take that red meter lead and we're going to put it on the negative terminal. Then we're going to check black to uh, our squiggly line. 0 0.4 to 0 0.5, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5, and 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. So what we've just confirmed is that the input section of the board is intact. Okay, the diodes are functioning as they're supposed to. We the don't import, have the import gates. Yeah. 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 So if you, have a, if you have one that's not, then... If you have one, then you're dead in the water. Yeah, and you're not balanced. And that's right. Yeah, so basically we're, with this test, we're just confirming that those diodes aren't stuck open. Yeah. You know, or completely blown apart or whatever. Okay, so now we have confirmed the input section is A-OK. -okay. okay. So now we're ready to move on to the output section. And so we're going to go back to these P and N terminals that we talked about earlier. And now we're going to do the, pretty much the same test. Okay, so we're going to take our red meter lead and we're going to put it on the P terminal. We're going to take our black meter lead. We're going to put it on these output terminals here, the U, the V, and the W. These go to your compressor. These lines go straight to the compressor. So we're going to put our black lead on U. And what do we read there, John? We're still rising up and we're at yeah. OL. Okay, so we've got OL, OL, and OL, okay? So right. the, the same test. If you have a positive lead on a positive terminal, your result should be OL, OL, OL. If you can remember that fact, then you can troubleshoot any one of these boards. We're gonna move our Switch black lead. What do you think it's gonna be this time? Yeah, it's uh, 0.48. Here we go. What'd you get? 0.4 to equal oh, close. Oh, man. So anywhere between 0.4 yeah. and 0.5, we're okay. Okay, so that one checks good, so we're ready to move on to the end terminal. So now, with our black lead, we're going to put it on the end terminal. And then we're going to take our red lead, we're going to put it on U, OL, OL, OL. Looks good. So black lead, put that back there for a second, black lead on black terminal, the result should be OL, OL, OL. 
or black lead on the end terminal, mm -hmm. I should say, on our negative terminal. Red lead on the end terminal, we're going to go U, we've got 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Okay, so that looks good. So there's one more little trick that um, our, our VFD specialist, Jeff Smith, taught me. Okay. And this involves um, doing a, a simple charge of the capacitors. And so this is something Jeff does anytime that he walks up on a VFD that's powered down. You know, because a lot of times we work on big VFDs. If you power up a VFD that, that has a, a short inside the cabinet, yeah. you, you run the risk of, of, of severe hazard or injury. Yeah. So what we can do is we can turn our meter to the resistance function. So we're going to put it on the on the resistance function, not the beep test. We're going to put it on the resistance function. So we're going to change the range. We want to make sure that it's in manual range. And this meter is capable of doing up to 60 meg ohms. Okay. So see our manual range, 60 meg ohms. So this mm -hmm. is like the highest voltage that this meter is capable of outputting. Okay. And so we're going to go back to our DC bus one more time. And we're just going to put our meter leads there for a minute. I'm going to try to not block our camera angle. But we're just going to essentially charge these capacitors with a little bit of voltage. All right, now this isn't a foolproof test, but it does kind of let you know that the circuitry is still intact. So we're just going to charge up those capacitors for a moment. We're just going to let our meter lead sit there. And as that ranges up, we're going to charge those capacitors. So we can flip over to volts DC. So you just charge them? You just charge them, yeah. So you can watch them discharge now, right? Slowly but surely. And so this is just, you know, a few volts DC, but it confirms that the, the circuitry is at least intact. Mm -hmm. You know, it confirms that the capacitors can hold somewhat of a charge, you know, so this, is, mm -hmm. this board would be safe to put it in operation for further checking. Yeah. Okay. So outside of that, a couple other things that you might want to look for um, is your hap light. You want to make sure that the hap light is blinking steadily. All right, if you walk up to the, to the machine and the hap light is blinking erratically, that usually indi uh, indicates that there's a, a communication issue between the inverter board and the main PCB. So we've confirmed that our input is good. We've confirmed that our output is good. So our IGBT section is good. Our yep. diode section is good. So now we can move to the outdoor unit so and then do the inverter transistor check with the system line. We know our gates work. We know we're switching back and forth from AC to DC. We're we're able to charge up our capacitors and then we're flowing correctly back out into the compressor. So that's a, that's a great question, John. So we have confirmed that, you know, the bench test shows it's as good, but now we would want to move on and, and put the, put the board back in operation and mm -hmm. put it in what's called the inverter transistor check mode. Okay. Okay. And so these IGBTs on the output section, these are controlled by the main printed circuit board. The main printed circuit board is going to send a command to this board, and it's going to tell it how, what sequence to switch those gates and how quickly to switch those gates on the IGBTs. Okay. Okay. And so whenever you do your inverter transistor check in setting mode two, number 28, you want to have all of your compressors disconnected from that system. You'll put it in mode two, number 28, and then you want to um, make sure that your compressor leads aren't touching each other or anything. And then you're going to want to take your meter lead and put it on each one of those terminals and check it to ground they should all be balanced. Okay, if you've got one that's not balanced, that's an indication with an issue with your printed circuit yeah. board. You know, so you may have a, an IGBT that's not firing correctly. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the gist of it um, as far as checking the boards. Now, whenever you go to replace a board, uh, with VRV3, they were air-cooled. Yeah. You know, they've got like a, a heat sink on the back. Right. We got a heat sink on the back of this yeah, one. Yeah, got a heat sink yeah. on the back of this guy, right? And you notice this one's got some dirt in it. You know, yeah. It's got some, some funk in it. So for a maintenance item, you can just blow these out with nitrogen. You don't want to make sure that there's not a bunch of junk and debris in there because these uh, inverter boards, they generate heat. And so we've got to get rid of that heat somehow. Okay, so they've got a heat sink on the, uh, uh, the VRV3 units, on the VRV4 units, and later they're actually refrigerant cooled. Okay, and so that requires a special paste mm -hmm. that goes on, you know, in between the, the heat sink and the inverter yeah. board. I think we did a, we did a video on we that We talked one. about yeah. that one, yeah. 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 And so make sure that if you are replacing the board, some of them actually come with like a little, it's like a patch. You know, it's like a heat sink patch. We've had better luck with paste, you know, using a suitable paste that can mm -hmm. handle the temperature. Make sure that, you know, you can use whatever brand paste you want, but just you have to do some research and figure out which ones are capable of, of handling certain temperatures and yeah. duty cycles and things like that. So we take, usually take the patch off 
and put paste on. Use that paste liberally. Make sure that that entire surface is completely coated because if it's not, that board is going to overheat and you're going to be back very soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, just keep those in mind whenever you go to actually replace the board, assuming the board has failed. Um, you know, because that's, that's a really common thing that we see in warranty is, um, you know, a lot of folks, anytime they have a failed compressor, they ask for an inverter board with it because that was the old way of doing things. You know, always replace the inverter board with the compressor, but that's really not the case. We have a lot of methods that we can use to check these yeah. inverter boards. You know, so especially if the part is not under warranty, you know, inverter boards aren't cheap. Yeah. You know, so do your due diligence and make sure that you're checking uh, the integrity of the inverter board and not just condemning it. Yeah. Okay. VRV is, I mean, it's, it's here to stay. Um, it really is changing the HVAC world, but it can be overwhelming electrically if you're not used to this stuff. And what we want to do is we just want to share the knowledge and information we have. Quentin, so mu thanks so much for always yeah. uh, providing what you know. We want to educate so people are more enthusiastic about going out and working on VRV and, and have that confidence to be able to serve clients well. Absolutely. So, the more we know, the more enthusiastic we are. So thanks so much. Uh, come back, check us out. Uh, check out our other videos on Mechanical Pros and uh, hit those comments, hit that like, subscribe. Uh, this, is, this is always fun for us. And uh, if there's something else we can provide for you, please let us know. And we'll catch you next time on Mechanical Pros.